Now, real quick rundown here. This is something that I mentioned in a couple of previous lessons, just to make sure we understand storage capacity terminology. Basically, we have these things called bytes. And if we break down a byte even further, the smallest piece of data that we can have is actually something called a bit. Okay, and a bit is simply a one or a zero. Because truthfully, no matter what type of storage we're ever talking about, everything comes down to ones and zeros. Okay, it's all about uh, electrical current, either on or off, or magnetic charge being either positive or negative. You know, it's always about one or zero. Okay, and each one of those ones and zeros is a bit. If you take eight of those bits and put them together, that's what makes up a byte. Now, from there, if you take a thousand of those bytes, and to be fully accurate in this, it would be a thousand and twenty four of those bytes, you end up with a kilobyte. Now, the reason I mentioned a thousand, well, there's two reasons. Number one, the math is a lot easier, right? The math is a lot easier when you're multiplying something by a thousand than when you're multiplying by a thousand and twenty four. The second reason is because there are certain storage device manufacturers who will advertise capacity based upon you know an even 1,000 multiple. Okay, and that's part of the reason why you will see a device. You know, So let's take a hard disk, and let's say that you went out and bought a hard disk, and it's supposed to be 100 gigabytes, and you install it in your computer, and you format it, and just like that you have, and I don't know what the exact number is, but you know, let's say you have 95 gigabytes instead of 100. Well, the reason why is because from a marketing perspective, they'll use 1,000 as the multiple to get to being able to say that there's 100 gigabytes. But when you do the actual math, you're supposed to use 1,024. So getting back to the chart that we have here, 1,024 bytes equals a kilobyte. Now, kilobytes is something that we haven't really dealt with in a long time. So if we multiply that again by 1,024, we say 1,024 kilobytes is a megabyte. Now, megabytes is a term that is still used in today's world, although it is quickly being considered to be extremely small storage. I mean, if you're in the megabytes range, that's really small storage. So if we multiply that by 1,024, 1,024 megabytes is then a gigabyte. That's where we are realistically at in the gigabyte era. Everything is measured in gigabytes. I mean, memories in gigabytes. Hard drive capacities are in gigabytes. And now, I know you're, you're already sitting there saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Gigabytes? I, I, I have a hard drive that's terabyte. Yes, we are in the early phases of moving from gigabytes being the norm to terabytes being the norm. And, well, guess what? A terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes. All right, so that's all I have listed for you here because that's where we're at today when it comes to storage. Now, I will tell you, when I say today, I'm saying in the commonplace. Okay, I'm saying by you know the, the regular average user, we're in the gigabytes and terabytes arena. The reality is, is that there are super high-end data centers out there that have storage that goes way beyond terabytes. And so I don't have it listed for you here on the screen, but just as a kind of a quick side note, if you take 1,024 terabytes, you end up with, and careful here, if you're thinking in your head a certain answer, a lot of people get this wrong because a lot of people think it's an exabyte. And the reality is, is that, no, it's a petabyte. 1,024 terabytes is a petabyte, and then 1,024 petabytes is an exabyte, okay? And, and the reason why is because there are a lot of things out there that have been publicized that they can go up to a certain amount of exabytes, and the term petabytes kind of got skipped over in some of those max quantities and things like that, and that's why we don't see it as much. But petabytes absolutely do exist, and somewhere in the near future, we are going to end up seeing petabyte drives. All right, so just keep that in mind. And by the way, there's a lot more that goes beyond that. I mean, there's Zettabytes and Yottabytes, and there's even one that I always get a kick out of. I'm not even sure if they've officially made this the name. I think they have at this point. I know when I first started looking it up, it wasn't the official title. It was just a, a thought of what they were going to name it. And it's something called a Bronto Byte. 
And to me, <laughs> if you're about the same age I am and, <laughs> you know, grew up with the Flintstones, I don't know why, but <laughs> Bronto Bite, I always think of the Flintstones, which I find ironic considering the Flintstones is Stone Age, right? And now we're talking about Bronto Bite, which is way into the future. Anyway, way off topic here. I just want you to understand how to do the math when it comes to storage capacities.